Calling it now, my movie of the year. No spoilers until the end. Stay tuned. If you've seen any of the marketing for this, you know it's hype. The title is a bit perplexing at first, but it's meant to be representative of a few things. One, it's post-war Japan and they're at zero after World War II and the atom bomb attacks, so Godzilla showing up puts them even further below zero. Two, it predates the original Godzilla, making it a weird precursor rebootish film. Three, it's the 70th anniversary production in the 69th anniversary year. Hence the title, Minus One. And I saw it twice in 24 hours to make sure I really knew how I felt. A bad day can make you more nitpicky when watching something and I was unsure on some things so I went again the next afternoon. And I'm so glad I did as those nitpicks plummeted in importance and the film was even better in round two. Now I've been a Godzilla fan my whole life. It was literally my first fandom. Lots of kids watched Sesame Street or other shows as a toddler while I watched Godzilla films. My mom was a huge fan growing up herself and still is and she got me and my brothers into them. And I was fortunate enough to see my this one with them. It's crazy to think that it's the best time to be alive as a Godzilla fan since we're eating good with a plethora of content. Trust me when I say it was not always this way. What a great time for the big G and when I say this is one of the best of his films, I do not say that lightly. Right out of the gate, Godzilla himself is brutal here. He's a mean one in this incarnation, and I absolutely love his design. It's one of the better ones. He's got a facial structure reminiscent of Heisei or Heisei 90s Godzilla. The dorsal fins kind of remind me of Godzilla 2000 with how pronounced they are, and the lower half somewhat of GMK being Thickzilla. He's a big boy. The director said GMK, which is Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, giant all-out monster attack. It's a mouthful, and that's why we call it GMK. The director said it's a favorite of his, and was a huge inspiration on this film, and it's hard not to see why. It's everywhere but we'll get into that more later. Godzilla, at his best for me though, is often a two-sided coin. On one side, it's hard to top him fighting other monsters. On the other, Godzilla as a metaphor tends to resonate powerfully in cinema, largely the first one hitting this so hard that it's created a 70-year cinematic legacy with 37 films. Now, I love it when the films balance the two of those sides and come together to create something even better, but I'm always down for a new take, and here the big G is representative of many things. There's no other monsters, which is, a little sad. I'm ready for Japan to have another versus movie. But of course, there's the obvious themes of warnings of nuclear power testing and its effect on the environment, governments, and the world. Godzilla being a representation of those dangers and acting as a punishment for them. That's all been done a lot. To my surprise, the nuclear themes are somewhat glossed over. It's there visually, but surprisingly, there's more talk of the air raids on Japan and no mention of Hiroshima or Nagasaki or how Godzilla relates to the nuclear test. Maybe it's because so many films already referenced this, they were trying to do something new, but still included in there with a shot. You'll see what I mean. This surprised me, but by now most know what old G-Man stands in for. But here, it goes further with him representing the collective grief, regret, and the pains of the entire war itself. How Japan's participation in horrendous tragedy haunts them. How they can't seem to escape the horrors of the war just by trying to rebuild everything. It's paralleled with the journey of the protagonist, whose survivor's guilt is juxtaposed with his failures and Godzilla's attacks. It's quite brilliant, and a fantastic layer to add on to the metaphor of kaiju and what they mean to society, beyond monster smashing and it's cool. Which leads me to saying that this is one of the best human stories ever in a Godzilla film. I don't think I've ever cared so much about the characters, outside of maybe the original film, than the ones here. The entirety of the story follows Koichi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a disgraced kamikaze pilot in his efforts to live a life after the war. It's an often nuanced, tragic, and haunting tale. You'll hear me say that a lot. But yet it turns into one of hope and healing, which I could have never guessed. It touches on heavy themes of survival's guilt, deep-seated regret, and the desire to work together to create a better future. It's extremely dark at times, but never without optimism rising to meet said darkness. And that is a refreshing take as opposed to straight up nihilism. While Godzilla brings more stains of trauma on Japan, exacerbating it further, and the government's being unable to act makes the entire situation an expression of Japan's fear and anxiety at their lowest. The government won't help. The country is devastated. So many are dead. And so it's up to the former veterans and citizens to rise up, acknowledge mistakes of the war, and how they can do better. The way in which human life is valued and treated is so precious, and it's beautiful and just uplifting. And where that ends up, brought tears to my eyes. And the performances sell everything. They are earnest and captivating and just raw. I, I cannot compliment them enough. The direction and the acting, phenomenal. 
Now, while I do think Godzilla's destruction is absolutely incredible to behold, I mean, you will be shocked that Minus One was made on a mere $15 million. In only a couple of shots of VFX, can you tell the budget is stretched a bit? But it's like 95% consistent and looking great. Maybe not as perfect as some of the MonsterVerse in terms of CGI, but it's shockingly good. It makes one think about how bloated Hollywood has come with their costs, although I don't know all the ins and outs of the Japanese film industry. But when that wreckage Godzilla rot happens, you can't help but gasp. But I will say a nitpick there is, is that we could have sat with said devastation a little more to really get a feel for that minus one situation the country was suffering from. The filmmakers know we've seen this countless times over seven decades. So they make the creative choice to always shift the focus back to the very personal level in the human story on Koichi. And honestly, without the extra runtime, I admire and love that choice. It makes the payoff at the end seem that much more worth it. And the first time I watched it, I thought there were some pretty slow parts because of this affecting the pacing but honestly, again, I'd had a bad day, had poor seats, and drove over an hour to see it. I was exhausted. So the next day when I saw it again, I felt none of that. So keep in mind, sometimes first impressions can be skewed based on your personal life. But since I mentioned nitpicks, I'll mention that there's restraint in how much they show Godzilla, and I could always go for more Godzilla screen time. It's something that's always been a part of the franchise that he's in just a little bit of the movie or he doesn't show up for a while, but he's in here more than many others and he isn't teased up for so long throughout as you get glimpses very early. But there are moments where you're just ready for him to show up again, but you're also terrified of him showing up. So it builds tension throughout the whole thing. You want the character safe, but keeping the story so personal only allows for so much monster carnage. And I'll say because they pace it so intentionally, each scene feels like it's earned and has enormous payoff when he shows up. They even get really creative in how Godzilla is showcased with his powers, his abilities, and how he even moves. The city attack that does eventually ha happen has uh, homages to the original, to GMK, and more, but the naval battles are some of the most interesting as we usually get glossed over that. The Navy usually doesn't last long in Godzilla movies. It's usually Air Force repeated shots. The science seems pretty sound and ingenious in how they approach battling him, and I loved all of that. The beginning has a reference to a classic origin from one of the older continuities that made the fanboy me very happy too. I haven't even gotten to the musical score. I listened through it entirely, and it is foreboding and honestly, haunting. I was driving some back roads at night while listening to it, and it terrified me, made the whole situation feel more ominous. Then there's fantastic, genius use of classic Godzilla themes and tracks from Mothra vs. Godzilla and the original King Kong vs. Godzilla. And I was hype when I heard it, because if you know, you know. Okay, so from here on out, there's gonna be a few spoilers about the ending. If you don't want them, you can jump ahead to the end and see my score. You have been warned, spoilers. I love the ending, but I also have some observations. It's a clear riff, and I don't mean that in a bad way, of GMK's ending where Godzilla is destroyed in a somewhat similar fashion and his heart is still beating on the floor of the ocean. Here, a portion left of him starts regenerating as the film cuts to black. Now, I can see why this would, could be divisive for some as there's an argument to be made that it robs the victory and happy ending the film built toward. But in classic cinema fashion, a twist ending can have a gut punch in a positive way. It keeps you talking about it and thinking about it. The fact that it's regeneration feels earned it and as a payoff because he does it in the rest of the movie. And the Godzilla movie ending with teasing his return is typical Godzilla. If it bothered you, I get it. But rest assured, this is a common thing and leaves the door open for sequels. Seriously, watch any other one and you'll see what I mean. They always tease him coming back. So it doesn't bother me too much. In the end of the credits, you hear him walking and roaring again. So yeah, Godzilla's back. Where the potential nihilism comes in is in the most joyous scene in the movie where it's revealed Mariko survived. I had figured it out a little before, the film doesn't really try too hard to hide it, and just wondered how on earth she survived that wind blast and all the rubble that was flying through the air at like Mach 7. I guess stranger things have happened, and then the mark on her neck that seems innocent at first begins to move. Is it radiation poison? Is it an infection? To be honest, it's a bit out of nowhere left field and easy to miss if you're not paying attention. I can see the argument that it also robs the scene of some joy with a random rug pull. And I was in tears when it happened so suddenly. So wait, 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 what, what, what's happening? And as it seems ominous right before cutting to Godzilla regenerating. If it is this, it fits in with the themes of minus one as throughout so much trauma, fighting for joy, even in celebration, there's tragedy to be had. And there's always another obstacle in that era of Japan's history. I'm not quite sure the film is trying to be so cruel with bringing her back to only see that she's deathly sick but what if it's something more my mom mentioned to me and my brother on the way out of the theater that what if it's godzilla 
that did indeed affect her, but it's a mark of his radiation healing her and that's how she survived. What if through all the collective suffering at the hands of the monster, the destruction brings surprise healing to the land both physically and metaphorically, almost like a yin and yang. Godzilla killed tens of thousands and destroyed untold landmarks in devastation, but he also brought the people of Japan together to overcome their past and maybe brought about healing for survivors in sickness. Considering it immediately cuts to regeneration displays both hope and horror. It's purposely ambiguous and I love that. Here's hoping this begins a new continuity where this Godzilla and these characters can return for some answers and more period pieces for settings. Maybe the next one could be a remake of Godzilla Raids again in a sense and bring Angiris, my boy, back in. But none of those nitpicks are large enough to detract from much for me. And the second time in 24 hours, somehow they decreased exponentially and the film was even better. Honestly, it is so easy to justify this as possibly my favorite film of the year in a top five or higher Godzilla film of all time. I give Godzilla minus one five out of five stars. Thank you so much for watching. Comment what you thought of the movie. Hit like, subscribe, and remember, always look for the good.